It makes me so happy to see such a big crowd um, come out from the community to share this day with us. Um, on behalf of the National Park Service, I'm pleased to welcome you to Andersonville National Historic Site and Andersonville National Cemetery. My name is Gia Wagner. The staff and I, along with our many partners, want to personally thank each and every one of you for observing Reeves Across America with us today as we remember and honor the military men and women buried in our national cemetery this holiday season. We are very grateful to all of those who helped us successfully hold this event, and there are too many to name. Um, we will begin today by paying respect to our American flag. Please rise for the presentation of colors by the Robbins Air Force Base Color Guard and remain standing for the national anthem. Please remain standing as Sheriff Bryant of Sumter County Sheriff's Department offers the invocation. On behalf of the Sumter County Sheriff's Office, myself, Sheriff Eric Bryant, and on behalf of the Macon County Sheriff's Office, Sheriff Leonard Johnson to my left, we again officially welcome you to today's ceremony. Let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, thank you again for this day and this opportunity. Thank you, dear Lord, for life, health, and strength. We thank you for those that are gathered here today for today's ceremony. Thank you, dear Lord, for their safe travels. Thank you, dear Lord, for their health. Dear Lord, we remember and reflect upon those that are in turn here today. Thank you for their families. We honor and recognize the families that will be honored here today, and we thank you for each and every one of them. Dear Lord, we ask for a safe 
event today, we ask that it be done not only pleasing in thy sight, but reassuring to the families that are affected today. We say thank you right now, dear Lord, and we love you. We ask in these and all of the blessings in Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. Andersonville National Cemetery is the final resting place for thousands of our military men, women, and family members who served and sacrificed for our country. We are entrusted with their eternal care and charged not only with honoring their memory, but also ensuring that the depths of their sacrifices are understood by new generations. Reese Across America furthers these goals with the help of many wonderful partners. We would like to give special thanks to a few that have provided support in so many different ways uh, to the entire park here at Andersonville. First of all, Bennett International Family of Companies have worked tirelessly to make sure this event was a success. Uh, a new partner, Truist Bank, the Taylor Found Family Foundation, the Friends of Andersonville, the American Ex-Prisoners of War, the Sumter County Sheriff's Office, Rees Across America, and a huge thank you to our very hardworking Reef Ambassadors, Tidewater Lumber, and South Georgia Technical College. We're extremely grateful to all of our partners and supporters. Your extraordinary efforts and determination to honor those buried in Andersonville National Cemetery has made this event a success. I'd like to invite Lee Gentry, Executive Vice President of the Bennett Family of Companies and an enormously hardworking supporter of our National Cemetery up to the podium. Lee? Well, good morning and welcome. Isn't this wonderful? Look at the crowd we have this morning to remember, honor, and teach. You're here today because these people out in this cemetery paid the ultimate sacrifice. Thank you, Gia, and everyone at Andersonville National Historic Site and, and uh, Andersonville National Cemetery. We are all very humbled and blessed to be here today to remember, honor those who have paid the ultimate sacrifice and to teach our youth the importance of freedom because of those who are laid to rest here among, amongst us. The reese, these wreaths here came with the support and gracious giving from many people, and we are so grateful for their support. I would like to thank our Bennett family of companies, the Taylor Foundation, and, the board, and their board of directors, board of directors for Bennett, and of course, Mrs. Taylor, our CEO, for their support. And today, Mrs. Taylor is with us because of her strong value of commitment to patriotism, love of country, and the symbol of freedom, our flag. Thank you, Mrs. Taylor. I would like to also thank our ambassadors today for all their hard work and support during this year to help raise money to sponsor a wreath. I would like to extend a spe very special thank you to Phil D'Souza, Misty Griffith, John McGehee, Colonel Mike Hernandez, Jim Cummington, and the entire ambassador teams for all their help and especially for their fundraising efforts. Our team of drivers who transported the wreaths from Maine to here. 1,750 miles, and I'm sure you saw the tractor trailers as you came in this morning. They're beautifully wrapped in respect and honor. A special thank you to Sheriff Bryant for his advice, support, encouragement, and his example to all of us for his love of country, and to past and present men and women in uniform. If you'd like to be considered to be an ambassador, we have request forms at our table, at the Bennett table, we'd love for you to consider being an ambassador for this wonderful program. You know, when I first came to Andersonville here in 2017, I met this wonderful and kind gentleman called Jim Covington. He shared with me that his passion and his love for this cemetery 
and those buried here was to cover each grave with a wreath. He didn't feel he would ever see that in his lifetime. Well, last year we did just that. For the first time in the history of this cemetery, we together were able to place a wreath at East Gravesite. This morning, we were both humbled and blessed to look across this cemetery at all the wreaths and the boxes waiting to be placed. Today, we are again, Jim, placing 20,300 wreaths to honor every gravesite here. For the second time, for each uh, eligible headstone, we'll have a wreath for Christmas. When we leave here today, you see the tombstones, how they're here. But just think, when we leave today, they will be decorated with a Christmas wreath to remember, honor, and teach. Thank you all again. Merry Christmas and God bless. And God bless America and our men and women who provide the freedom every day. Now I'd like to introduce the president of the Bennett Family of Companies, Mr. David Pittman. Thank you, Mr. Gentry. And uh, Sheriff, I don't think you need a microphone. I think you got that one covered. I always need one, however, and, uh, and the group of Bennett knows that well. Good afternoon, everyone, and Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. So about a month ago, I was with a gentleman who said he invented the high five. And uh, after he told a story for about 10 minutes, I think all of us in the room finally agreed that maybe Nathan invented the high five. So today I'm going to start something, and you all can help keep that alive. I think I'm going to start wishing everybody a joyful Christmas. Joy is found in your heart. And we so often walk down the halls and say, Patrick, Merry Christmas. But if I say, Patrick, have a joyful Christmas. Amen, I know you will. Today, folks, we're here, as Leah said many times, to remember, honor, and to teach. But I want to emphasize that a little bit to you folks as to what it means to me. So if you are active in our military or have served in our military, would you just raise your hand so we can honor you today? Thank you for your service so that we can be here today to honor you. And I do know that there are a few of you here today to remember someone. If you're here today to remember someone who's buried here on this property today, would you raise your hand? Wow. That's, that's touching. And as I walked around today, I saw a lot of young kids. And for the elders, this is our teaching moment, folks. And I want to walk you through what I mean by that. Pretty soon, you're going to be active with placing wreaths on tombstones. But as a parent, as a mom or dad, this is a teaching moment for you. When you get that wreath, it's not a competition to see how fast we can do this, folks, because it's not going to take that long anyway. But there's someone that you're honoring at that moment. Read their name. Say their name. Step back. Salute. Place that reef with a bow on top. That's a teaching moment. And another teaching moment I want to tell you about is one of giving back. We're all about paying it forward. And I'm proud to look straight ahead of me and to see a van that's parked at the very end of this road here. After you've placed the reefs today, I would challenge you to go and get a picture in front of that van. It's truest van. This is a large company across the U.S. They employ some 30,000 people. If you're with Truist here today, would you raise your hand? Thank you all. Nothing would make them happier than for you to get a picture in front of their van and share it with folks and thank Truist for being a part of this. And today we have Steve Yarborough here with us. 
And I want to invite him up to the stage here. Well, he's on the stage. Just invite him <laughs> to the pedestal. But folks, this is a day to remember, honor, and teach. I'm going to leave the stage here, and I want to hear everybody say, I wish you a joyful Christmas. One, two, three. I wish you a joyful Christmas. And everybody in the house said, Amen. Amen. Thank y'all. Steve. Thank you very much. I wish you a joyful Christmas. Joyful Christmas to you too, sir. Thank you. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Um, as David said, my name is Stephen Yarbrough, and I'm visiting today from Truist with many of, of my teammates here to uh, work with all of you to honor and serve um, our, our, those who've given the ultimate sacrifice. One thing that was said this morning is really to take in how many generations that are here today. And in particular, I've been struck with how many young people are here today. And we really want to thank you, parents, grandparents, other family members, for bringing your children out here today. We, we've talked a lot this morning about the importance of our history and honoring others. And I also noticed today that there are a lot of veterans in the crowd today. You can, all, you can see their hats. And, and for those of you that see those folks, I would ask you to say hello and thank them for their, for their service. Truist is honored to be a part of this. We, we thank you for including us. We very much thank the, the Bennett uh, family of companies uh, working closely with the, the Taylor Foundation as well. We appreciate being here and we wish you a joyful holiday season. Thank you. Thank you, Lee, David, and Stephen. Thank you so much. What an amazing achievement it is to be able to grace every single headstone with a wreath again for the second year in a row. I know it's something our veteran families appreciate beyond words. On behalf of the National Park Service, the staff at Andersonville National Historic Site, thank you so much again to everyone who helped make this a reality and you out there. From the earliest conflicts of our country through today's modern warfare, the legacy of our veteran heroes has been one of sacrifice and commitment to the ideals of our nation. The servicemen and women that we honor here today reflect that legacy and remind us that the cost of freedom is high and can never be taken for granted. Wreaths have long been associated with status and achievement, and the evergreen wreath represents the victory of the eternal spirit over death. We ask that you reflect upon these themes as you place your wreaths today. To those of you who have served or are now serving in the military, thank you so much for your service. At this time, we will honor each branch of our armed forces prisoners of war, and those missing in action with special wreath presentations. I ask the wreath presenters and their escorts to prepare to approach and hold your designated wreath. As I announce your name, please approach and place your wreath here in front of the rostrum. Stacy and Liana Wakeley, who brought the Army trailer, will present a wreath to remember those who have served and are serving in the United States Army.
Tom and Pat Teddy, who brought the Wreaths Across America trailer, will present a wreath to remember those who have served and are serving in the United States Marine Corps. Stacy and Kelly Barger, who brought the Navy trailer, will present a wreath to remember those who have served and are serving in the United States Navy. Colonel Mike Hernandez of the Sumter County Sheriff's Office will present a wreath to remember those who have served and are serving in the United States Air Force. Chris and Brandy Clark, who brought the Truist trailer, will present a wreath to rem remember those who have served or are serving in the United States Space Force. John McGahey and Julie Shoemaker will present a wreath to remember those who have served and are serving in the United States Coast Guard. Robert Ellsworth from Ace Duran, who brought the Remember, Honor, Teach trailer, will present a wreath to remember those who have served and are serving in the United States Merchant Marines. Danny Lowry, President, Bennett Distribution Services, proudly presents a wreath to remember those who are missing in action, prisoners of war, or have been prisoners of war.
This completes the Armed Forces Wreath Presentation portion of our program. I'd like to invite Lee Gentry back to the podium to highlight and honor a few of our veterans. A member of Park staff will place a wreath for each of our honorees today. Lee? We also remember three veterans who were buried this year here in Andersonville National Cemetery. We are here today to honor Carl Israel. Carl was born on July 24th, 1950 and passed away on September 5th, 2022. He was 70 years, 72 years young. He was the son of Willie and Lillian Clark Israel from Montezuma, Georgia. Carl attended D.F. Douglas High School and graduated in 1968. Then he went on to attend Fort Valley State University. Carl was married to Carolyn Johnson and they were married for 52 years. They were blessed with a son, Travis. Carl's family included Delois Jorney, Carol's sister, along with Willie Israel Jr., Frankie Israel, and Dave Israel. Carl served his country faithfully for eight years in the U.S. Coast Guard. Carl studied hard and worked hard to work his way up in rank from boat mate to second class and E5. From the hills of Tennessee to the coastline of Galveston, Texas and to Tybee Island. Carl served his country well by helping others in need. Carl during his service received many awards for helping and saving lives of stranded people on the water. Helping to rescue boats in time of stress when stranded in the water. Carl had two passions. He loved working in his yard to keep his lawn looking fresh and his flowers blooming. And he loved his country and being able to help others in time of need. We honor and thank Boat Wayne's mate second class, Carl Israel, for his service. We are here today to honor Vernon L. Phillips. He was born on January 24, 1939, passed away on October 11, 2022. He was 83 years young. He was the son of Reuben and Eden Hopkins. They were his adopted parents. He was married to his lovely bride, Johanna. He was blessed with five children, Kimberly, Patricia, Keith, Kevin, and Tammy. He was blessed with 12 grandchildren and 16 great-grandchildren. Vernon served in the U.S. Army from, or U.S. Air Force, excuse me, from 1961 to 1991, 30 years. During his years of service, he received many awards and patches, which included the 58th MAS patch, AFLC flight test patch, that others may fly. Vernon worked as a jet engine mechanic for five years, flew as a flight engineer on the C-141 for 25 years, achieved rank of E-9 Chief Master Sergeant, served in Vietnam from 1968 to 1969. During Vietnam, Vernon flew surveillance missions over Vietnam on the C-47, Puff the Magic Dragon. Vernon didn't share a lot about the war, however, he did share with his family that he was proud to be a part of the C-47 surveillance missions team. Their job was to fly over Vietnam to detect North Vietnamese radio signals to help our men on the ground to know when, where they were. He hoped his crew was able to save lives on the ground. We honor and thank Chief Master Sergeant Vernon L. Phillips, for his service. We are here today to honor Grover Wade Rogers. Grover Wade Rogers was born on August 30th, 1949, and passed away on August 24th, 2022. He was 73 years young. He was a son of James and Rachel Rogers. He was blessed with a daughter, Leah, two grandsons, Derek and Ryan, two brothers, Gay and James, 
and sisters Mary Ellen and Robin Ray. Grover served in the U.S. Army from December 11, 1968 to April 3, 1972. Grover received during his Distinguished Service National Defense Service Award, Vietnam Service Award, Combat Infantry Badge, Sharpshooter Badge, and two Purple Hearts. Grover was a Staff Sergeant by the age of 19, and before going to Vietnam, he was sought out by many on how he became one so fast. The day Grover was hurt, a young man who had only been in Vietnam a short period and when his, was on his first time going out on patrol, this young man was assigned to run point. Grover talked with the young man and said he would run point because this other young man was so scared. Grover stepped on a booby trap during this patrol and wasn't supposed to live long enough to make it home. Being hard-headed as he was, he made it back and did construction work until his 60s. During the war, Grover, Grover was a tunnel rat also, and, and you asked me, what is a tunnel rat? The tunnel rats were soldiers who performed underground search and destroy missions during the Vietnam War. Today, we honor and thank Staff Sergeant Grover Wade Rogers for his service. And now in honor, we will play taps. Thank you to the families for sharing these important. You can sit, I'm sorry. <laughs> Taps gets me every time. I'm kind of in my own world right now. Um, but really, thank you so much for sharing um, these important stories. If you have a fr veteran friend or family member interred in a national cemetery, um, either here at Andersonville or anywhere else in the country, you can share their stories and photos on the Veterans Legacy Memorial website maintained by the National Cemetery Administration. Um, we've got some printed uh, website addresses at the Green Tents. If you're interested in doing that, I highly encourage it. Um, it's, it's a great way to make sure their legacy is shared forever. We are in the forever business here. Uh, both the National Cemetery Administration and the National Park Service. So, so please take advantage of that if you're able. Um, if you would like to have your veteran honored at next year's Breeze Across America ceremony, uh, we've got sign-up sheets for those who might be interested in that um, at the volunteer table, or you can give us a call anytime. Um, we'll, I, I think we'll pick them out of a hat or something next year. We'll see what happens. Um, I'd really finally like to acknowledge the staff of Andersonville National Historic Site and also a few from Jimmy Carter National Historical Park down the road um, for their service to the park and for honoring our veterans and their families every single day. They thoughtfully share important stories with our many visitors tend the grounds, and ensure our funeral services are honorable. 
they take their work seriously, but also with a joy and a sense of purpose that is very contagious. I'm so grateful to work with such a wonderful staff and a bunch of wonderful volunteers who are helping us today too and who help us almost every day of the week. Feel free to ask them any questions you may have today and I'm sure you'll agree with me, they are top notch. Please stand. The Sheriff Bryan of the Sumter County Sheriff's Department offers the benediction. As we close again, thank you for your participation in today's ceremony and we invite everyone to assist in the reef laying immediately following. Let us pray. Grace of Heavenly Father, thank you again for this day and this opportunity. Thank you for today's ceremony. We ask a special blessing among those families that are honored here today. But never forget all of the families that are represented today and the families that are here participating. We thank you, dear Lord, for life, health, and strength, safe travels, and safety throughout today's wreath laying. We ask you now, these and all other blessings in Jesus' name, every heart say amen. couple of safety items. Um, I'd also like to reiterate what was said earlier. Um, we, we ask before you place the wreath, you pause to read the name on the headstone to honor and remember that individual service member. Uh, make sure the wreath is straight, the ribbon on the top. For your safety, please watch out for fire ant mounds, holes, and uneven ground. Uh, we've got water available if you're thirsty, um, and we should have water on some of these golf carts that are circulating around if you need them. If you need assistance getting back to your vehicle, I know some folks have parked fairly far away, uh, please ask one of our shuttle drivers or a park ranger the hat like this, and, and we'll get you back to your vehicle. Thank you again for being part of our Andersonville community and for helping us honor our veterans and their families during this holiday season. We wish you all a very happy, healthy, and joyous holiday season. Please select a section and let's get to work. Thank you so much. <laughs>